A beautiful morning to you and welcome to the News Report Review right here at Prime Media TV. I am Ayo, bringing you the news headline for today. And as always, I have quite a number of issues to be discussed with you today. As you all know, it is the 1st of August, the D-Day for the planned protest. And here we are looking at how successful this is going to be. But then, you know, my co-host is in the house with me because we want to be giving you updates back to back as to what is what has been happening so far since the protest started today. My co-host, um, Uwachuku Treasure, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, you know, while I was coming this morning, you know, a lot of persons were asking me, you're going to work. What are you going to do at work? And I'm like... You know, it is first the reaction for me, like, whenever we are talking about protests, people are afraid, they don't want their loved ones to go out and all of that, you know. You know, I just want to know what were the, what were the issues that, um, what were the issues you were able to manage while coming this one? You know, there's, there was, a, till I got to my bus stop, you know, first there was, um, there was no bike. It was as if all the bikers in my streets, they went on vacation this morning. I didn't even see one of them to pass by me. But then that's not a problem. I have my leg to take it to the bus stop. And another thing I noticed is when I got to the bus stop, you know, I was thinking maybe it was because of the um because of the protests and all of oh sorry, not protests, because of environment. I you know today is Thursday. Yeah. There was no bus. There were a lot of people on the on the uh, at each bus stop and all of that. Thankfully for the, the bus that took us took us from um took us from inside the streets to uh, to uh, where I was going to and all of that. But I was just wondering, like I could count the number of buses I met while coming, and it is unlike before that you see that the road is busy, everybody is out now. It is as if some people, like they parked people out of the streets and they went to, so they kept them somewhere and all of that. So I want to, I would like to hear your thoughts. If it was the same at your own end, what were, what, what was the situation like at your own end while you were coming and all of that? Before we then go to the reactions of. Um, nigerians as to the protest and all of that so let me hear from you all right um firstly let's say happy new month uh, viewers yeah happy uh, new month <laughs> i always forget that i only remember to wish you for happy new year it's <laughs> okay it's a good one remembering that today the first of august the yeah. almighty protest the nationwide protest is uh, it has started yeah of course now, talking about my experience regarding your experience i i was surprised that everywhere is not bubbling considering yeah. the fact that Lagos state said there's not going to be protests mm. and that the workers should go to work so you know, of course when you know that workers are going to work by how busy the road will be mm. i got to the bus stop and i discovered that everywhere was very unusual mm. and uh, yesterday you know something caught my attention yesterday everywhere the market it was as if there's not going to be movement today yes everybody wanted to buy I, I I went to the gas station. Like every seems everybody was coming out to fill gas and yeah. all that. You know, I was like, what, what is happening? Protest does not mean people shouldn't go out. Yes, you know, and these are the reason why the fear, the, the this fear mindset, possibly because of um how protests usually turn out, mm. and because of the you know threats, fear, you know, of uh, from the government. We see recently the way the military, the police have been parading, yeah. you know, so armed as if they are going to Sambisa Forest. Exactly. You know, even uh, Sambisa Forest, they won't <laughs> do that. You know, yes, uh, one of these days within this week, I visited one of the local government and uh, you needed to see how armed the mm. military men and some other forces, you know, in front of the local government, as though they are preparing for war. Mm. You know, so I think this thing, uh, the reason why. People, should I say, people are stuck at home? Yeah. Even though there is no Nepal light, there is no fuel. You know me, I'm, I'm just wondering that we are complaining that, you know, just last night, I was just reminiscing on how things are, you know, before in Nigeria, when you have 200k in your account, you're feeling like, ah, have a right. You have money. You have money. And actually, your neck you like this. then, it, it, it then can do you, a lot have, for you. you can do a lot of things. But I was just reminiscing that now, if care is not taken, if you don't spend wisely, with the 200k you have, in your account 
you just open your eyes you close your eyes and open it back and you discover that the money has disappeared if you buy one or two things from it you know i'm just wondering that if nigeria had been a working state i mean you are among the richest of the richest with mm. 200k in your account but now it is not like that any longer and it's you know it also brings me to have the conversation on fear you know a lot of persons you know i understand that they were asking out of concern a woman asked me ah, are you going to hope oh, the place you are going to is not far oh the place you are going to is very close and all of that there's no boss and you know, i'm just wondering in my head we are saying things are not working mm. yet you people are out of fear you know, I, I feel like there's a way fear caged people. Mm. You know, there are a lot of people that fear has caged. And they are just sitting back and waiting for a messiah. So another conversation I, I, I got a glimpse of while I was coming. Some person, okay, in the bus that we entered, some people were like, hey, there's no need for the protest. We don't have to come outside. See the way everywhere is dry now. See the way everybody is. Okay, I was listening to Voice of the People this morning. And they were saying, one of the caller was saying that, in 20 there was a time that at uh, baba deboe had a one million rally against fuel subsidy and insecurity that why can't he do it now and in my head i'm just thinking that we don't we should understand that we don't need a messiah to come and save you the messiah has come you know it is just it is bringing a lot of conversation into my head like the messiah has come already the more we wait for another person to come and save us the 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 worst the situation of nigeria is going wait. to the longer we are going to wait so why are we waiting for some of these top people you know the person highlighted baba deboe he highlighted um wale show inka he highlighted pastor tunde bakari that they all came outside then that why are they not doing the same thing now but then let me hear your quick thoughts on that and we are going to dive into the main conversation for today how the protest is going how the turnout of people at the protest ground what people are saying as per the protest the songs in the mouth of people so let me hear your thoughts while we wait for the video well it's quite unfortunate that in a time like this that people collectively has come out that mm. we are still waiting for some voices yeah you know the truth of the matter is most of these people usually come for self-gratification to take glory I it was so but yeah, i don't see it that way you know we? that initially that mm. that that has been what i've been playing out you know i i so much thank god that no one can confidently come out now and say he or she is the brain behind this protest all right so nobody of course we know what judging from what is playing out in the under this administration had anyone come out they would have been either in dss custody or in the military custody because this 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 uh, administration they can use they abuse power they can do anything to get what they want talking about uh, power de boyum it's so unfortunate you know i've actually asked this question you know before the 2023 election almost all the pastors left the message to prophesy you know to to, to should i say to to predict who was going to win the election and it felt so unfortunate that none of them is saying anything now and I began to ask, it doesn't mean that the people that preach fearlessness are now afraid. Because they, 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 these are people that say that you don't fear men, you fear only God, the one who has the power to, to, to kill and to make alive. So why are they not saying something about the realities? Because I believe we should, be, we should not be biased. But the boy cannot say anything. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's so unfortunate that he's among the, should I say, people that, your boss say that when they join, when they're eating dodo, they won't be able to saw ododo. You know, they, they, somebody, he was one that they, should I say, ordained or anointed and, and gave uh, the president, I think, a name. All right. So there is no how he will come out and, uh, and uh, criticize his government. But for the fact that one, I mean, some factors have been able to bring Nigerians together is a reason why. Nobody should be sitting on the fence. Uh, uh, God will be with you guys. That, you, you know, when you go to the comment section, you see some people saying something like, I love what you guys are doing. God will be with you. That shouldn't be the case. It should be, let's come together. You know, the strength of a broom lies in its numbers. You don't expect some people to be out and some people to be at home. If you go out now, majority of Nigerians are at home. They are not even following they are not doing anything. And some of these people you see saying there is no need for the protest. 
they are the, they are still the people that tomorrow tomorrow they will be the one if they should go to the market and as a result of this protest as a result of the current price of fuel things has increased they will still be the people to lament all right yes. it's so unfortunate that we have an opportunity that can enable us to rewrite the scripts that can enable us to change things in the country and nobody is saying anything and i tell us if the government if our leaders succeed in silencing the voice of the youth of the people now sincerely they've pocketed nigeria all right. nobody will be able to say anything all right. anymore all right the, the the truth is that nigerians are out already but then we like that i would like that we dive into the conversation on day one of the protest you know i've been able to see quite a number of videos you know i was actually expecting that uh, as i'm coming i'll be seeing a lot of people and you you stated something earlier you said um some persons a lot of nigerians are actually in their houses right now that is the truth mm -hmm. because they are afraid you know they you know i could remember leaving the house and some of my family members i just try be careful and all of that you know I just I, I like the fact that I have come to a point in my life that I can I can tell when something is right and when something is wrong. Mm. I can see when I can see the right from the wrong things, and you know I can air my voice. But then let's quickly go to the street of um, Abuja. Let's see what the protesters in Abuja are currently saying. Let's hear from them, and we'll be right back. <laughs> all right so that is um protesters in abuja but something caught my attention in what they are saying i don't know maybe i, I would like to hear your thoughts the, the the fight the protest is you know I, I love the fact that there are a lot of security personnel present with them and yesterday i was listening to the um uh igp and he was saying um he was saying that they are going to that when they called for when the commissioner called for meetings with the people the organizers of this um protest that it is only one group that showed up and that is the take it back movement they they were, repre it were uh, they were represented by their lawyer and they couldn't make the physical meeting in abuja so they did the meeting via zoom and they were able to know that it's according to take it back movement there's only going to be eight state they are going to be protesting in eight states they mentioned the states and all of that and he said at those eight states they are going to deploy their people there they are going to ensure that intelligence measures are put there to ensure that the protests go safe uh, safely and thank god i can see that it is the take it back movement that is leading this protest currently in abuja and we can see the turnout of people the people are not much and um the song they are singing, I, I would like that you will come to that. But then I want to hear your quick thoughts on this protest that is coming. Okay, maybe we should start from the song. They are say, singing revolution, revolution. Is the conversation on protest or on revolution? I am trying to understand why it is now about revolution and no longer about the protest. What are your thoughts on uh, what the video we just watched? Sir? Well, um, I am not surprised at the song they are singing because the government has practically made it seem impossible or a kind of uh, unconstitutional for the people to come out and protest and they are outside now Glory right to go so down. if if they are saying with the way they if they don't want to protest at least people can come out for revolution All right so the, the 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 people when you talk about revolution there are so many things in it and uh the people want a revolution, a you know, a, re, a redivination of things, change. It's all you know, clothed in revolution. They want amendment of so many things. These are all clothed in revolution. So I believe since the government now imagine or the, ordinarily the protests are not supposed to be slated to so, so, so some states alone because it it is start nationwide protest. So it means it should be it should be occurring in all the states now yeah, but, but then the thing is that the only 
a group showed up out of so we were to was talking about revolution now uh but there are a lot of other groups that came out you know talking about it you know co uh, according to the igp of police yesterday they said they online they were able to count about 30 over 30 uh, people talking about the protest and all of that over 30 groups but nobody is owning up to it so now i get that it is nationwide protest but according to this um take it back movement they uh, they were the only group that showed up and that was why they said they according to them they are only staging their own pro they only have people to hold the protest in um eight states that that's maybe there's a leader and all there's a leader to lead the movement in case things want to go south there's somebody to talk to them there's somebody to lead them and all. so what are your thoughts on the other group that has it as that has been talking i mean so rest voice is very loud on social media so why didn't he join you know why didn't he come out to say okay i'm among the organizers of this protest so that god forbid something about is about to happen there is somebody for the people to listen to because we see that during the answers you know when some people some people are saying let's retreat let's retreat some people are saying we don't know you you are not the one leading this protest you are not our leader so we can't listen to you so for at for for us to avert such situation why do you think this other group are not coming out if the uh... If an individual or some group of people have come out to be to claim or to, to, to declare themselves leaders of this this nationwide protest, do you think it will still hold, judging from the kind of government we have? But then take it back movement. They came out, they they I I'm, I'm, they didn't meet with the gov the federal government. They met with the commissioner of police. And I love the intelligence they put. They didn't appear in person. That you see, the, the same thing I think you see for the fact that Currently now, we cannot say the protest is not happening. You know, sometimes I have to believe that there are some meetings, that not all meetings we attend. If the meeting, because I believe if this meeting has come earlier, it would have been of importance. So calling for a meeting when it's almost time, it's a kind of very late, I'm sure is the reason most of them never showed up in that meeting. Because what do you want to start addressing when you've already issued threats? You've already done things to counter the protest. You've already sponsored counter protests. So what what essence? What will be the essence of the meeting? Because I have to believe that if the meeting is based on addressing the agenda that the the the, the end bad, uh, bad governance protest is aimed to you know to achieve, these people would have showed up. But they are not calling for a meeting to address this issue. Of course, they are calling for this meeting further to maybe you know, maybe to 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 uh, to, to to further issue threat or to to, to buy them over okay. so to, i see that is not that is the reason why many of them didn't show up it's not as a an out of cowardice or an out of fear or stuff like that i don't, I don't think so all right so i i want you to speak on the number of um persons we see in this video if we can have the video again or we'll move on to that. well the, the the number is uh you know the the the, the beginning of 18. the the just like the the the, all the protests we we we've all witnessed before now uh the first day is always like that and i tell you before evening we see the numbers will definitely increase yeah right so it's for the fact that the people defy the fear the the government has been projecting and come out is in is courage and you know is is courage on its own yeah. so i believe the number some people seeing them will be forced to join them yeah exactly. right so the number for them to have started is encouraging and i believe many more people will join them exactly so that that was actually my thought immediately i saw the video too that people should not be discouraged by number no, it no, no, happens no, no, no. like that no. you start something there is not enough pain. you know you know it is just like when you have a party yeah. everybody will not come and come in at once there are a lot of people that will still be on their no, way all the people so, that joined nlc on their one day protest did not join at once yeah exactly. as some other people as some people were seen joining some were joining also so before you know it becomes massive so i believe that before the end of today is a mm -hmm. 10 days uh, 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 uh protest and i believe that before the end of today more people will be will gather momentum the exactly. government you know the, the government is actually uh building momentum in the youth by trying to put fear in them you know if, if somebody gets to a point where you become fearless uh waiting my eye never see what 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 is going to happen that has not happened before that is what the government is ending up the the the, the, the war the, the government is pushing the youth to what will happen should happen 
we have right. let us see the end of it all that is what the the the, the, the where the, the the people of nigeria are being pushed to now by this fear and discouragement because we know it's constitutional the people know that they have the right they are not coming to do things that are, that are contrary to the law so for the lawmakers to even be coming out now and be saying uh, speaking one voice all of a sudden it it uh, it it uh, it uh, it it it's it contrary to what they should be doing, and All right. I think for the youth to have to, to, to have come out, we commend them. All right, so um, it's a good thing. The beginning of a thing is not usually loud like this. There's tomorrow. There's the next. You know, a lot of people are still the fear of what um the all of the announcement that we've had over the last few days is still in the heart of people. You know, I watched yesterday some um some oral people in uh, in uh, Ikorodu. They were moving around. They were saying that there is no protest. We don't want protest. None of you should you know, come if, outside if, if, for if protest. Oro is actually Oro. If they if they are actually out for Oro, they shouldn't be talking about the protest. No, the, it is not. It is not even for the Oro. Like they are just. It is just like an an, an anti protest. Anti protest. Movement, just to discourage people from in protesting. a traditional way. And you know that you know tradition. You know when you place something on the table. You keep you place a Bible or a Quran on it. People are not afraid of it. Yeah. But tie a red cloth to it. Pop palm oil there. Put one uh, snail shell. Put it there. People will be afraid. So that is the that is the fear they are trying to implant in the heart of people. So I see that this is part of the reason why um, Nigerians are not coming outside here. But there's tomorrow. There's the next and the next and the next until the end of the protest. But then we have quite a number of other videos that we would like to. Um, we like our viewers to also see so they can know what is currently happening. You know, I saw a group earlier this morning that they were singing the new national anthem and I'm like, new national, no, sorry, the old, the old national, national anthem. anthem. So very quickly, let's track up the video and we're wondering why the old national anthem. Let's have the video and we dive into the conversation. Good morning, Nigeria. Today is the hunger day. We all promise you that we are going to be on the street of Abuja. And hunger has brought me out. I, can't, I don't have money to buy food. I don't have money to buy whatever. There is total bad government. And I think I'm encouraging each and every one of us that the government has used propaganda fake news to tell you that the protests are cancelled. Look at us on the street. The protests are not cancelled. We are on the street. It's 10 days. And I think our demand is not being made. We will remain on the street. See, our demand is being made. Hunger has brought me out. Insecurity has brought me out. Poor housing has brought me out. A lot of all right, so um, we'll have the video of the national anthem later. But this man here is saying, Onga has brought him out. You know, one, one thing, somebody said something. The person said, this, anybody that is carrying this bag, and I want you to, to tell us <laughs> if how true that is. The person said, anybody you see carrying this type of bag, this man is carrying, the person is suffering from poverty. Mm. Because that bag, you use it to you. <laughs> see, Jesus come and, you know, the bag is still very, you know, it's, it sounds funny, but but then it is just the reality of Nigerians. So what are your thoughts? This man said, Onga has brought, brought him out. You know, the first the first thing that came to my mind when this guy said this was what Akpabio said yeah, two days ago. Said our Senate President Akpabio, I sometimes wonder if our leaders think before they talk. He said, whoever that wants to protest should go and protest. There's no protest in Niger data. We will be in our house eating. So you are telling us that the people who are protesting are hungry, and this man has just confirmed it. So what are your thoughts on what he said? Then we'll move on to another For the third man in Nigeria to come out and make such statements, it's, it's a very disgracing thing. It shows how, you know, in one of our story here, they say we are family. <laughs> they say we are family, that this is a family issue. Mm -hmm. We should be treated as family issue. And uh, we can see how they, considering saying that we are family, how they are taking for them to say that, uh, you know, it's, it's quite unfortunate that somebody will come in a place and they say, because he is there, all the people will not protest. You know, who makes you the spokesperson of that state, that village, that entity? Well, hunger truly is the reason why people are protesting. This is not anti-government, anti-party anti protest. This is 
you know, reality-based protest. Mm. So hunger, you know, insecurity, so many things which are facts are the, you know, the, 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 are, 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 the, are the things that have given room for this protest. So Nigerians are not protesting against Tinubu. Nigerians are not saying Tinubu should even leave the office, but just to correct, amend things. Let everyone, let it be democracy as it, as it is said to be. Let it be democracy. Let people have access and, you know, you know, access to things they should have access to because we know we have these things. All right. Um, like you said, reality. Reality has brought people out. And, you know, you said earlier when we started that yesterday you saw some people going to the market to stock their food. So it is because they have the money to stock the I, house. I That's why they gas. are stocking. Just 12.5 gas is 14,500. Mm. How long is it going to serve? We don't want to talk about the rice. The rice they talk about, I don't know if you've come across where they're selling the 40,000 naira rice. I've not seen it though. Okay. I only heard about okay. it. I've not seen it. You know, those things, they are only available to limited people. Do you know that? You see, I'm going to say that anybody who collects rice at this point that Nigeria is right now, anybody who collects rice from politicians is, is an enemy of Nigerians. Why am I saying that? Ghanaians are currently protesting too. And some politicians brought 25 uh, kg of back rice. of rice, a bag of rice for them. They returned it. They carried it and returned it. They said they don't want bag of rice. We want a job. We want a job that will be able to serve us. A job that we don't even have to depend too much on the government to provide the food that we eat. You see, it is not the duty of the government to provide food for us to eat, yes. but they must provide the infrastructure for us to get that food. There is good road. There is easy transportation. There is easy housing. You know, the economy is at ease for people to live in. Once upon a time, we used to buy a bag of rice for 8,000 naira in Nigeria. Sure. With 8,000 naira now, you can't even buy a paint of rice. So just imagine, those youths, they insisted, they returned the bag of rice. They are not saying, yes, we are hungry, let's manage it. But that is the reality that we see in Nigeria. So I would be so disappointed in any Nigerian who has the nerve to collect any bag of rice from any politician. Now, because the reality is... Hunger is the reality in Nigeria. For how long are you going to eat that bag of rice? Regardless of how long they are going to give it to you, regardless of how much they give to you, how long will it save you for? You know, recently, under this administration, we no longer talk about balanced diet. Now, who they show balanced diet? How can diet you talk again? about balanced diet? Who is it? Nobody, when, nobody is eating balanced you, diet you, anymore. You, you, you have the, the you, you now eat what you see, not what, what you want to eat. Mm. Because let's assume you, you ah, I love eating yam. How long can you keep buying yam at the rate it is being sold now? You know, I visited the the new Bola Ahmed Tinobu market recently, and uh, the, the place where uh, the, we are believed that the, the, the pepper and tomato is where it's sold. I mean, should I, I got there. The prices I was seeing this, I'm talking about recently, within this week, it was something else. All right, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, I just commend the, 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 the courage of. The Nigerian youth and Nigerians, not just the youth, who you know summoned courage, who defied the threat of the government to come out to them. And I tell us, if we get it right this time, it is going to transform Africa in general. Yeah. All right, because many countries are looking up to Nigeria, and we can see that this corruption, this bad governance, is not only telling on Nigeria alone. Yeah. It is it, it, it is a kind of virus that have gone viral, you know, to many nearby African nations. And I pray that God will help us this time not to allow their fear to get to us. Sincerely, if these people are able to prevail, Nigeria has been pocketed. Mm. Nobody will be able to say anything. They will should forget about election come 2027 because who is going to come out? It means, so I want to plead with everybody. This protest is a constitutional right of every citizen of Nigeria in as much as... Um, they, 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 they fear, they, they, you know, they, they can they dare not start shooting at the, at the protesters. No matter how armed, armed they are, they dare not come out to shoot at the protesters. All those fears, sometimes some of our parents are calling, don't go out, to, don't stay at home. If all of us decide to stay at home, who is going to come out and do the protest? We all are right. going to come out.
All right. In another conversation, let's take a tour round to Portacourt. So currently, some of the demonstrators in Portacourt, they are reciting the old national anthem as their form of protest. And mm. we are wondering, arise, O compatriot. Mm. Nigeria's call, obey. obey. I mean, that's, that national anthem is making sense to me it's now. The real Very quickly, anthem. let's go to, let's go to Portacourt to see how the protest is ongoing. The there. national anthem talking about the reality of Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. and unity that is what they are doing so i want to hear your thoughts like it is make every word that they have made every line in that old national anthem it is making passing sense message. now it is passing a message nigerians mm -hmm. has called you it is now that you'll be wait is it that the president brother ahmed tinubu led administration knows that a time like this will come that is why they scrap this anthem mm -hmm. But the anthem is making sense now. The truth of the I matter mean, is that from all indication, we discovered that this administration have everything planned. From all indication, we can see that even before they got into power, they have their strategy. They have everything. Of course, is someone who made a promise of a renewed hope has it structured. You see, what thing I want us to understand that what is happening in Nigeria currently is not a mistake. Mm -hmm. It is an, an articulated plan. All right? And it's so unfortunate that we have elders. You know, there is this culture. This thing is making me to doubt this adage in Yoruba that say, Agbala You know, that the elderly people don't lie. We have elders in power who are lying, who are not sincere, who are not transparent, who are not living in accordance to the stipulated rules and regulations, mm -hmm. rules and laws of the land. You know, it's so unfortunate that, should I say he's, because... Let for him alone, the president alone. I'm sure he cannot be that, you know, you know, heart, heart heartened not to have seen the handwriting on the wall. I'm sure he has packets of people who, and these people are helping him to collapse the nation. And is there's the mistake the presidency, the, the federal government is making. Some of these people backing that seem to be backing them. We see what plays out in politics. Once the going becomes tough. You see them backing out. You see them decamping. You see them saying, I'm no longer doing, I'm no longer part of. So this uh, they, they, it, 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 this new national, I mean the old national anthem, the real national anthem, these people are reciting. You see that is passing, is addressing the mind of the people. The message in those, the, all the lines in that national anthem is talking about the realities in Nigeria currently. The people, the labor, everything all the labors, the effort of our past heroes are now being, you know, it's the, 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 the things Nigeria used to stand for is no longer what we are standing for now. Go out there. There is a current video in one of the country where I think some black, some Nigerians or some black uh, Africans were, you know, put together in a place and the, some, the, 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 the students in that place were pricing them. I don't know if you have come across that video. That is what the government of Nigeria has reduced Nigerians, the, the politicians in Africa has reduced their citizens to that out there, Nigerians are no longer valued. It seems as if, um, if, if your place is, is good, why are you coming to our country? That is how Nigeria, because we have leaders, elders in power who are not prioritizing the, the welfareism of their people. Only God will help us. And uh, the people in uh, Port Harcourt, we, uh, we, we commend them, their number, their courage, and we know that, of course, before evening, before noon, the number will increase. And for them to have uh, come out, we, I want to believe, is a motivation for so many people who are at the corner watching. Let's see if, if they will still come out. By the end of today, tomorrow, we'll know, of course, we'll be giving our viewers updates. Yeah, the number exactly. will surely increase. Exactly. You know, 
it is so sad that in Nigeria we we like to see the weakness first before we see the strength. Mm. You know, watching this video earlier, somebody made a comment on that and he said, Oh, all these heavyweight lifters. And I'm like, ow, <laughs> like this thing does not have to do with your look, it doesn't have to do with what you have, what you do not have. And another person came and said, ah, look at how few they are. It is just the eight of them that are singing. It has to start with somebody. somebody yes. You see, one thing is that we are always waiting for the crowd. When I see the crowd, I will excuse myself into the crowd. You know, we must, we must be fearless enough to stand before every giant that we come across. We must be fearless to the point that regardless of who is for... You see, there are things that you do and people look at you and they feel like you are insane. You know, as at yesterday in somewhere in Ogun State... A guy was seen carrying a cardboard and he said, address at ship. Talk about, he was only one person. Mm. You know, the guy is not afraid for, being he's arrested. not afraid for being arrested. He's not afraid for, for being beaten. He's not afraid for being killed. He's not afraid for being, being you know, flogged or something. You know, and this is the point that we must get up to. You know, while I was coming this morning and a lot of persons were, are you going out? Are you going to? What if they start the protest? What, you, what will you do? I left the house at a time that even if I do not get a bus to, to come and do this this morning, I would trek it. Mm. Because this is the Nigeria that we're in. We must get to a point that we can see. For me, it is not about me. It is about the coming generation. Yes. If it continues like this, what will the coming generation build on? Mm. Imagine if it continues to become difficult. If it, you know, just this morning, I was looking at a two bedroom apartment for renting. The total package for that two bedroom, something comfortable and affordable for, for in a, a good standard of living. You will have to spend one million naira to rent a two bedroom apartment annually. annually. And I'm wondering, where have we got into? You know, at there was a time that with 200,000, you can even buy a plot of land. Not anymore in some prime areas in Lagos. Mm. Not anymore in some prime area in Nigeria. That means if I do not have up to 50 million naira, I can't afford to buy a, a landed property. If I do not have millions of naira, I can't afford those things. So what will become of the generation that is coming? Mm. So I see that these guys are fearless. They are not interested in who will stop them. They are not interested in, their, in they are not discouraged by their numbers, but they are holding up. They are saying that arise, O compatriot. Nigerians are calling and you must obey. And this is the song that will continually be in their mouth. They are saying that the labors of their heroes will not go in vain. And that is what we see happening. Those people who fought for our nationalism, those people who fought for where we are today, their labors are gradually going down the drain. Mm. We are indebted in Nigeria. Nigeria is in billion dollars debt. Who will save us? You know, there was a time, there was a time, uh, one of our guest analysts on this show, I would always ask her, they are saying we will pay the debt. Who will pay the debt? My children that have, have not even given debt, are they the one that will pay the debt that this country is in? If we do not clear this mess now, who will save us from this mess? So this is what I see these guys saying, that the labors of our heroes, they are gradually going down the drain. And we must fight to, we must ensure that these people look back wherever they are and they are saying thumbs up to the Nigerians that are coming up. They are saying thumbs up to this Gen Z generation. They are saying thumbs up to everybody that is lending their voice in this fight. So this is what I see in this video. Well, um, you see, we, we will not stop to commend the efforts, the courage of the Nigerians because if I say Nigerian youth, it will seem as if it's only the youth coming out. Everything. But they it's, are more of the youth. Yeah, it's a move for all the Nigerians. Yeah. All right. For the fact that uh, we saw threats, we saw coming from the military, coming from individuals, personalities, coming from the politicians, from the federal states and local governments, coming from traditional rulers, you know, traditional rulers that are supposed to be afraid of the gods. <laughs> In Nigeria, we now discover that they can give money to traditional rulers and they go against the gods only god know if the gods are still with these people you know uh for them to have summoned courage for them to have defeated the fear because the fear was so strong if you come out to be arrested that even the lawmakers have to be involved to ensure that the fear is uh, legal but so long nigerian youth have it has shown how ready minded they are it has shown that uh, regardless they, 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 they are approaching it with nothing, whatever will happen should happen. Yeah, exactly. So all the places that this protest has kickstarted, we commend your efforts and we know that um, we hope and pray that the purpose of this protest will be 
achieved. All because right. Because if okay. we keep quiet, too many things will go wrong. All right. You know, we've not seen any updates in Lagos yet, but then we'll be taking a tour down to River State now to see what is currently happening in River State. I don't know why. I've not seen anything happening in Lagos. Mm -hmm. So I, far I saw an today, yesterday. So far today, I've, as, as, I'm, as I'm speaking of today, today, 1st of August, I've not okay. seen anything happening today. But then let's go to River State and see the reactions of the protesters in River State and we'll wrap up the show at this point. Mr. President, the hardship is too much. It's too much. We are suffering this country. It's too much. You take me up with this. Enjoy it, Lord. You tell us every time. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. For how long? I don't need this. I don't need this. Don't give me this to you. One day and a half. All right. The question for me is that for how long are we going to endure? Mm. You know, I've said our this administration is full of motivating people. And these people are asking a question. We've endured for too long. Mm. We've you see, Onga does not know endurance. Let's understand that. Onga does not know that you should be patient. Onga does not know patience. You know, and there is a point that a person will get hungry to and you you feel like, no, I can no longer endure yeah. this. And you, if care is not taken, you may be pushed to do what you are not supposed to do. So let me get your quick reaction. This guy is saying the hardship is too much. How long do we want to endure now they are outside how long do you think they should endure this protest regardless of the turnout i i am expecting a good turnout for 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 this protest you know i have i have prepared my mind so well that it is not going to be bloody it is not going to be uh it, it is not going to turn to a state of anarchy as some of our leaders has predicted it to be you know i am expecting so much for this but then my concern is that how long can these people out there how long can they endure you know while the igp of police was talking uh, uh on your view yesterday on tvc your view yesterday he was saying that for for the take it back movement that wrote to them and he was asked you know, that what will become of those places that uh those uh, uh, states that are not included and he was saying that they should ensure that the rights to the commissioners of to the uh, um, DPO of police in their communities in their states and all of that. No, what I just expect that these DPOs should be doing is that even if they didn't write to you, write to them. Even if they didn't come to you, go to them. This is not a time because there are some people that are not even reached by the media. There are some people that they do not even they, they are not even online to see what is currently happening. But they just edit that. Oh, some people are protesting against bad governance. They are protesting against hunger and all of that, and they are just so interested in coming out. They're just so interested in joining the protest and all of that so for the for, for the the measures that the security can put in places to go to different places go there don't don't go and frighten people you know sometimes you see that some of our security personnel they go to these places with their guns you know armed around them you know they are not even friendly and welcoming with their looks with their uh with their demeanor and all of that so they can go there we are not chasing you just ensure that we are just ensuring that you are safeguarded you know your your, your this thing does not go south and all of that so these are the things that some of our security officers can do and this guy is asking a question how long should, should we endure this? And I think that now is actually the time for Mr. President to come outside to address Nigerians. You know, sometimes we hear things happening like this and you hear that it is the spokesperson to the Mr. President that is speaking to us. Now, Nigerians need answer. This guy has just asked a rhetorical question. How long should we endure this? I do not have the answer because I have well, I, I as well, I have been enduring it and all of that. But then it is high time that every leader come outside, every leader at every level come outside to address this because these people are asking pertinent questions. Yeah. How long should we endure? It is the duty of Mr. President to come outside to answer these Nigerians that are asking questions. Your quick take and we dive into another story. Thank you very much. You see, it's unfortunate that during election we have the president and all the none of them is too big to come out yeah. and address them. They are not afraid for their lives. You know, when it is campaign time, you know, we, we see them talking to the people, going to the to the to the to channel TVs often. Nobody speaks for them, you know. It's it's so funny. Nobody speaks for them when they are making their promises, they are not going to fulfill. Nobody speaks for them. It's so bad that till now 
the presidency is still, is still being, you know, somebody still speaks for him in a situation as critical as this. Something that, if not properly managed, could lead to the to the loss of lives and properties of the citizens. The presidency, or our dear president, is not holding up. Is not coming out. Is not seeing its feet. Rest, you know, you know what coming out to address the citizen. Somebody is. This, does it mean he's not in the country? Does it mean is 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 not a matter that is that 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 that, that is giving him concern? You see, Yet, what I'm saying is that they are expecting something, and their expectations will be cut short. Definitely. What they are expecting is that oh, when things begin to go bad, we'll now come outside to say she will tell you, we warned you. You know, one thing that me I just want Nigerians to do at this point is that they should ensure that they are well coordinated. This thing doesn't lead to the expectation. You know, that is what I'm just saying. Hmm. That they are expecting to come outside and say that we told you, we warned you guys, we did this, we did that. But we are not projecting that. Nigerians are going to do the right thing. They will coordinate themselves, and the expectation of these people in power will be cut short. You know, I said something in one of our talk on this protest matter that Nigerians politicians should understand that they are dealing with intelligent youth the fact that nigerians have waited till this time before a move like this does not mean that nigerians do not know what to do how to go about it so on that note i want to say that definitely their expectations their negative expectations you know for this protest is going to be cut short of course they will be disappointed because it was a planned thing. You know, they say proper preparation prevents poor performance. Nigerians took time to plan this thing. And for the fact that this is not um, a move bettered by, you know, a, a jealousy. Uh, it's not my party. It's not my tribe. Even most of the people that sang Emilokon are now longer, are now singing Emilokon. All right. So I want to believe that so long this thing is a move bet by reality, their their their, their, their wicked expectation will surely be cut short All because right. Nigerians will surely go about this. And SAS have taught Nigerians lessons. Yeah, exactly. So there's not going to be a repeat of the mistakes that occurred during NSAS. All right. On this note, we'll be going on a quick break. As you all know, today is the 1st of August, the first day of the planned nationwide protest. As we roam about the street of Lagos, we'll be bringing updates to you as to what is currently happening in Lagos. Is it that Oro truly came out or what should we be expecting? So we'll be going on a quick break now. As soon as we get back, we'll dive into that conversation. Stay with us.